Okay, so now that we've gone through the CompTIA a troubleshooting process, let's talk about some of the failures that can occur in a Windows operating system and some basic troubleshooting techniques for those. The first is BSOD failures. This is the blue screen of death, a crash of the operating system, otherwise known as a stop or halt, a system failure. And the blue screen of death is something that Microsoft won't call it a blue screen of death or a BSOD. That's more the name that's used in techie circles. And, you know, if you're a tech person, you might use that name, but it might be referred to as a stop error or other error within Microsoft's technical websites. And if you talk to Microsoft tech support. Now, the blue screen of death can happen because of a hardware or a software issue. Either the memory and CPU fail for some reason, causing the system to crash, or a system file, a core system file or driver causes the system to crash. Let's take a look at a couple of blue screens. And whenever I get a blue screen in a virtual machine, I, I save it. I do a screenshot of it so I can look at it later. And here's one example. This is a blue screen that occurred due to a core driver, a driver or system file within Windows. And if you look here, you see that it says exception not handled. So the system couldn't handle what was going on at the current time in memory. If you look here, we have two columns and these are drivers that have been installed. There's the first column and then it keeps going. And you can see the last one is this KBD class.sys. That's a keyboard driver. Chances are that is the driver that caused the system to fail. It could be because the driver itself is corrupted, the file is corrupted and needs to be replaced, or it could be because the memory area it inhabited has failed. And generally what happens is that causes the NTOS kernel.exe, the kernel file, to fail, and that causes the system to crash. All this information is then dumped. All the memory is dumped. All the memory locations is dumped into a dump file, which you can then later debug. And so one thing to remember is these blue screens can happen at any time. It could happen while Windows is running, but more often it happens when Windows boots up. And if it happens once, it's usually not too big of a deal. You should check the log and you go to the event viewer and check the system log and you should back that up as well so you have a history of what happened with the blue screen but if it only happens once you really shouldn't troubleshoot it too much it's when it happens two or three times that you really want to go ahead and fix the problem now you can see more about how to configure what happens with the system and this is important you do this in the system properties window and if we go to system properties here, advanced, I get there from control panel, system, advanced system settings, that brings up the system properties dialog box as we've shown before, and go to the advanced tab. You can also get to this from system properties advanced.exe directly from the run prompt. And if you go to settings under startup and recovery, you'll see the recovery options for this system, a Windows 7 system. And it tells you if there's a system failure, again, otherwise known as a stop error or blue screen of death, it'll write an event to the system log and you should check for that. And then it will automatically restart the computer. And you want to make sure that is selected because otherwise the user will be like, what's happening? And you'll have to, you know, actually hit the reset button on the system because control at delete will probably not work. And then it dumps the information that's stored in memory at that time of the crash into a file. And by default, that's memory.dmp. And here's the thing. If it does, if the problem does happen more than once, you have to realize that the default setting here is to overwrite any existing file. You may want to deselect that so that you can see each dump of memory. If you do see that this happens more than once, so you may want to go in here and deselect this guy so you get memory.dmp, then memory2.dmp, and etc. So that's where you would actually configure what happens when a system failure does occur. So you may need to do that. And then you can view this information with various third-party programs or Microsoft programs. You can do it with dump exam and other utilities that are downloadable from Microsoft. And you could do it with a programming language as well. So I'm going to cancel out of here. 
and we'll take another quick look at another uh, blue screen. Here's another one that occurred, and you can see the, once again, you can see the drivers that were loaded, and not many drivers were actually loaded before NTOS kernel failed. And so this is another type of thing that you might see, and here it says inaccessible boot device. Well, it looks like it was trying to boot to a SCSI drive. This is an older BSOD, but you might still see this if you have an SAS drive or a different older type of SCSI drive, and maybe on a server. So inaccessible boot device, it wouldn't boot to Windows properly. Something was wrong with that boot device and it might need to be repaired. And then here we have one more and you can see the list of drivers once again. And it goes down the list again here and you see srv.sys. That's the server service driver. And you need this if you want to have other people look at things on your system. If you want to store things on your system and have other people look at them, for example, a, uh, a shared folder or a printer. And so this file will crash. System files like this will crash sometimes. And again, that'll cause NTOS kernel.exe to stop working and the system will stop working. Explorer.exe will stop and you won't have the shell. And in fact, the core file won't work either. And that brings you to the blue screen. Now, generally, if this kind of thing happens, you want to make sure that you fix the problem either by an automated repair or by replacing the file that has failed, the file that is either corrupted or has failed and put it on a different area of the hard drive. In fact, if you delete this file and copy a new one over from the disk or from another system, then that file will inhabit a new portion of the hard drive. And that could be the issue. That sector, that piece of the hard drive could be failing for some reason. And so you want to make sure that that file gets replaced, repair the system. Now you might see other issues where you get an error such as there's an IRQ problem. You might see an IRQ issue or other hardware issue which doesn't show this list of drivers and you get codes instead. You can plug those codes into the TechNet online and you should probably get an answer to what's happening with that. But generally it's something hardware based, for example, the memory. And that's a, one of the main culprits. The memory could be failing, the CPU could be failing, video card could be failing, motherboard could be failing. Once again, the big four. So you would at that point want to go ahead and troubleshoot the big four. Again, that's your motherboard, your CPU, your RAM, and your video card. But again, if you see this list here with these drivers, then you're pretty sure it's a file issue. You're pretty sure something got corrupted, a file has failed, or maybe there's a virus. You don't know until you start troubleshooting it. So you want to make sure you try to do an automated repair and then also do an antivirus scan and see if anything comes up. Sometimes defragging the drive can also help. If the problem keeps happening and you really are having a lot of issues troubleshooting it, you will either want to call Microsoft Tech Support or escalate the problem to another person in your company or consider a reinstall of Windows and possibly a new hard drive. Okay, so there's a reason why that was number one on the list because a catastrophic failure of Windows can be really bad for the system and for your li livelihood. So BSOD failures, be sure to be able to troubleshoot those. And the whole thing with this and any of these issues that you might see here is you really got to employ that troubleshooting process. And probably the most important is number one, identify the problem. You've got to figure out what the problem is. Was it a hardware issue? Was it a file that failed? And you, you have to go to the right sources to find out exactly what that issue is. So next is failure to boot. Well, a system could fail to boot for several reasons. The BIOS or UEFI perhaps has the wrong boot sequence or priority or order of boot devices. Maybe the right hard drive isn't listed first. Perhaps the hard drive is not connected properly. Perhaps the hard drive has a problem with the boot sector. Or if you have an MBR based system, maybe the master boot record has failed. And then you move further on, maybe one of the files is failing. Maybe you're having an issue with boot manager. So a lot of possibilities with failure to boot. So check your BIOS or UEFI, check your connections on your hard drive. 
power and data and then check and make sure that the operating system is booting properly to the right location. Improper shutdowns can happen sometimes and they could happen out of nowhere. And it could be because you have some type of policy set. You never know. You might be set to have the system shut down at a particular time. That could have been done with the shutdown command or in an actual policy generated on the individual computer or on the domain. It also could be a sign of a virus that some type of malware is on the system. So you want to do a scan of the system and make sure that it's not infected. And really, if you do suspect that before you scan, take the system off the network and consider putting it into safe mode. And spontaneous shutdowns and restarts, same type of thing. You want to check for viruses on the system generally. You may also need to clean up the disk and maintain the disk with a, you know, a disk cleanup program and a disk defragmenter. But we mentioned sometimes when you're doing this, you're going to want to boot to safe mode to actually do your scans. You may need to disable system restore. But sometimes the system boots to safe mode on its own. And, you know, this is a failure because in regular safe mode, you can't connect to the network. You can't get on the internet. And so if it boots to safe mode, what it usually means is a video issue. Usually it's a video driver that is causing a problem and it won't work properly in the right resolution. So it'll boot to safe mode. Sometimes a system will just boot to a lower resolution if that's the case. Safe mode could tell you that there's an issue with one of the drivers and you should go into the device manager and see if there's any types of exclamation points or down arrows indicating that a device is disabled and uh, fix those problems, either update the driver or re-enable the device 